we could fit at least most of them in there. All right. Wow. Do you see our kids? Uh, where are we? If we haven't met yet, my name's Sarah. I'm the director here at Osamequin Farm. And our community maple program has been going on for a couple of weeks now. Thank you. Um, at the community maple program is when folks like you tap the trees at your house and then you bring your sap here and add it to our boil. And then we boil it all down together into community maple syrup. So that's what we're tasting here today. And the people who have been bringing sap will be getting sap, uh, syrup back for what we, they've brought. So that's the way that we um, run that community maple program. This is just its second year, so we'll do it again next year. If you didn't get to participate this year, um, you'll get another chance next winter. Just make sure you're on our email list. If you're here today, I'll make sure you're on it. Um, and usually in early February, we'll tap the trees. We let them give us their sap for about six weeks and boil it every week. And then we end the season um, together like this with a little celebration of community maple. We're thrilled to welcome our friends from the Poconoket tribe here today to do a little storytelling for us. We are on Poconoket land here at Osamequin Farm. Um, what else can I tell you? We have a really busy summer, spring, summer, and fall of events coming up at the farm. So again, if you're on our email list, you'll get those alerts. We're also very active on our Instagram and Facebook. You can learn about things that way. Um, but we've got stuff for adults, stuff for kids, stuff for the whole family, um, lots of different types of activities. So I hope we'll see all your faces again. Um, <laughs> that was sad. And after our storytelling portion, we do have behind us, you may be wondering why there's rope tied to the maple tree. We're gonna have a little maple, maple dance. dance. <laughs> We're gonna dance around the maple. So we'll be looking for hands to grab onto those strings and we'll all dance around the tree and tie it up in um, celebration of the syrup and the coming back of the light in the upcoming spring. And with that, I will turn it over to Tracy and our friends. Thank you so much for being here. Hello, everyone. I am Pocahontas. Dance at Star Station with the Poconoket Tribe of the Poconoket Nation. Lenny Tayo, Poconoket Akiak. Welcome to the land, ancestral homeland of the Poconoket Tribe. Our people have inhabited these lands for over 10,000 years before colonization. And the Creator put our people here to care for this land and to live in peace, harmony, and balance with everything on it. And I would like to just acknowledge my ancestors who did just that. And I would also like to acknowledge the Poconoket who today are still trying to restore a balance to this land. Sabote woche o ke ke son Sabote woche ni pi kwana kwana Sabote woche ni pa ke sakak Katani sabate katani sabate hey 
my fellow tribal citizens introduce themselves. Walguam Gamlamam, Rainbow Heart. My name is Whippy Kakuas. I am the drum leader for the Poconok Nation. I'm Strong Bear. I'm, I'm Roman Coyote, Kim. This Steve. is. Oh my gosh. Summer Rain. I am She Walks with the Wind. Um, my name is Xavier. I'm Poe, Shining Turtle, Poe to the Pot, the Keep the Count New Money. All right, guys, and we have. I am Mishki Pokemon Pokemon Show. I am called Cardo. I was named by the uh, the Sagamore of the Poconokets, mm -hmm. and uh, I am proud to have been named by him and Three Bears and and Praying Heart. It's a botany, everyone. Wow, this is such a beautiful day. Beautiful day. You know, I, I think I was supposed to tell one story, but is it okay if I tell two? Yeah. yeah. Can I tell two? This is such a beautiful day, and it's been very cold. And it, this, when it's cold and the day becomes beautiful, it kind of reminds me of uh, my friend Old Bear. <laughs> I like to tell this story. Because you know what bears do in the winter? What do bears do? They hibernate. But one winter, this bear, he woke up from hibernation and he came out of his cave. He must have came out because it was a lovely day like today. Maybe he thought it was spring, but it wasn't. He came out of his cave and he was awfully hungry. And he saw a fox. And fox had him a big string of fish. And so Mr. Bear said to the fox, can I have some of your fish? I'm awfully hungry. And Mr. Fox said, no, no, no. If you want some fish, you go and you get some for yourself. Well, Mr. Bear said, I don't know how to get fish for myself. I'm usually sleeping in the winter. So Mr. Fox said, well, if you want some fish, then you have to go to that pond over there. That's where I got mine. You have to make a hole in the ice. And then you have to get your tail and you have to put it down in the ice and sit there. But if you want a whole bunch of fish like me, then you have to wait until you feel a tingle here, a tingle there, a tingle all around your tail. <laughs> oh, 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 Bear was so happy. He said, I'm going to go get me a good meal. meal. But you know what happened? He went to get up. <gasps> and he couldn't. He was stuck. For you see, it had been a cold day, and the ice had frozen around his tail. So he pulled, and he pulled, and he finally broke free. But guess what? His tail remained stuck in the ice along with all those fish. And ever since that day, the bear has had a short, stubby tail. <laughs> it is. It's, it's a turtle shell. And you know that the indigenous people, we use the turtle as a calendar. Because if you count the small squares around the turtle, you would have 28 of them. And it takes 28 sun-ups or 28 days to create what we call a moon. You call that a month. And then if you count the big squares, there are 13 of them for the 13 moons that make up the year. So this is our calendar. And every moon, we have a celebration. Every moon we give thanks to the Creator because we are a thankful people. So every moon we give thanks to the Creator. And do you know what we're giving thanks for now? The maple. That the sweet sap is running from the maple tree so that we may we can have all of this yummy stuff. Now I'm gonna tell you a story about a story that we, we like to tell for the maple sugar moon. And it's a story that came to me by way of my brothers and sisters up north. So I was told in one of their villages, Gulsop came to visit. And he walked in the village, and there was no one there. And he was looking, and he was looking for the people. And there he saw, he saw the villages, and they were laying on the ground under the maple trees with their mouths open, letting the sap drip in. 
<laughs> he said, from now on, this is how it's going to be. It's just going to be the sweet water coming out of the tree. So you better get back and tend to your village and tend to the fields and do your work. Because the sweet water is only going to come out of the maple trees once a year. And that's how you're going to get your, your sweet sap. And so ever since that day, that is what my people have done. During the maple moon, we get the trees, we slice it, we put a wood splint in it, and we let the sweet water come dripping down. We collect it, we pour it in our big, big logs. We put the rocks in it until it comes to boil, and then we get that, it starts to thicken up. Now when it thickens up just right, if you're lucky, there should be snow on the ground. And you can get some of it, and you can just pour it in, in, the, um, in the snow, and you get like a taffy, right? You get a candy, a taffy, and, and that is, oh, that's so yummy. So when you eat taffy, I want you to think about the indigenous people. We probably did the first taffy. And then the other thing we would do is when it was cooled, we would get some birch bark and we would roll it up like a cone and put a splint in it. And then we would gather the snow in it and you can pour the sap, the sweet sap over the snow. And then that's and the first snow cone. It is, <laughs> it is, it's the first snow cone. <laughs> and so we, we would boil it for a while because we, we didn't do syrup like you do syrup today because we didn't do pancakes and all of that stuff. But um, but when you're having your pancakes and you're having your syrup, I want you to think of the indigenous people and thank us for the maple syrup because we are the ones who taught the colonists what to do with the maple tree and the sweet water because they didn't know what to do with it. So we would let it harden up and we would store it and you could chip pieces of it during the year. And if, if you need a quick energy, take a piece of it for some quick energy you could also we would use it when we were cooking our stews to sweeten our stews we would use it with our meat to sweeten and flavor our meat and then at the end it would crystallize on the log and you could scrape that and that was kind of like a sugar and we would also use that too you could use it to put in some water if you made some tea some sassafras tea and you wanted it a little sweet or something or some pine tea you could put a little bit of that in it, sweeten your tea, sweeten your berries with it. So we had many, many uses for the maple, and that's why we give thanks for the maple tree. And this time of year, that is something that you guys should be thankful for too. You should be thankful for everything that the Creator put here for us to use to nourish our bodies and to live. Oh, no. To botany, thank you. <laughs> So I have two lines in it. So, but that's so in, um, Lincoln. The Lincolns they're on my own side. They're on. Um, Okay, let let some of it come out of your hand. So, let it But don't tie yourself. <laughs> Did you taste it? Yeah. What did it taste like? Good. Good?